Board Member Marv Beam? Here. Board Member Carol Conry? Here. Board Member David Gardella? Here. Board Member Tony Gatliff? Here. Vice Chair Jane Mason Goldman? Here. Chair Mike Kelly? Here. Board Member Gerald Wizzawadi? Here. And Board Member Fred Elio was unable to attend. Any folks in the audience that would like to give testimony tonight need to be sworn in first. So anyone please stand up and let our clerk do so. Do you solemnly declare or affirm that the testimony you are about to give in these proceedings is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Thank you, Betty. Very quickly, I'll explain the rules and procedures that we'll go through today. I will read the actual appeal first, and we'll have a staff report made by Ford Pinellas and any staff here at Teller Beach that we ask. And the applicant is allowed to make a statement. After that, we'll have open discussion between the applicant, the, the, uh, any other witnesses, and the board, and then we'll have a vote. We'll have a motion in a second, and then we'll have a roll call vote for the appeal. So at this time, what we are considering here tonight is appeal number 22-01 at, at the address of 204 22nd Street. Is it Mr. Caro Caromo? Yes, Caromo. Santo Caromo. Yes. It's by Santo Caromo. Is asking is appealing an administrative decision made by the interim city manager consistent with section 94-62 of the city code of ordinances. Decision pertains to section 94-209 heights. Within the RL district, all res residences shall comply with the base flood elevation requirement as set forth in chapter 74 of this code. Two habitable stories may be constructed alongside a garage or storage area, or over a garage or storage area. The garage floor must be a minimum of 24 inches above the crown of the road. All residents shall, all residences shall not exceed a height of 35 feet, as measured from the base flood elevation to the highest point of the road. Permitted exceptions to the height regulations set forth in this sections are chimneys, cupolas, and similar decorations provided no height extensions, i.e. cupola, shall be used as a habitable space and provided no plumbing or electrical service shall be allowed with after the 35-foot height restriction. The variances to the provisions of this section shall not be requested or granted. This request is to build a single-family home with three habitable floors for number 22, appeal number 22-01. At this point, is there a representative here from Forward Pinellas? Mr. Chair, if I may, uh, Randy Mora. Sir. Randy Mora, City Attorney. Just a few procedural things I wish to address before we get into testimony. Uh, this is, as you've heard read before you, an appellate hearing. Uh, this is distinct. I, I only emphasize that to make clear when you traditionally convene, you're traditionally considering variances which have their own criteria. This is not a variance application. This is an appeal where somebody is saying, I think your city officials have interpreted this code provision incorrectly, and your code provides that if that happens, as it relates to Chapter 94, that they can seek your review of that decision. And so that's what you're being asked to do tonight, is to review the interpretation of the code. You are not being asked to grant or weigh in on a variance. And this is a quasi-judicial proceeding where you are acting as judges in that capacity collectively. Ultimately, a motion and a second will be made at the conclusion of the testimony uh, and evidence presented to you this evening. Before we proceed beyond that, have any, has any member of this body had any ex parte communications with the applicant or their agent, meaning have you spoken to them 
about this appeal before today? No, no, no. For the member on the Zoom? Yes, no, I have none. Thank you. Let the record reflect all responded in the negative. Has any member done a site visit, that is, go to the property for the limited purpose of evaluating this application today? I'm not asking if you live in this community and drive by it and have a tangential awareness of it. I mean, you went for the purpose of uh, informing your decision making this evening. No. 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 And for the member no. on Zoom? No. I'm familiar with the property. Thank you. Um, and then let the record reflect all members responded in the negative. Uh, with that, uh, staff will be making its presentation, and I will now turn it to um, the, city, the town and it, or the city and its uh, presenting officials. My one other ask is as you see, there's an individual here. Uh, operating as a stenographer, writing down everything you say. Um, there's always an audio recording of the proceedings, but should there be a subsequent appeal of this, one version of either the audio recording or that transcription may be used in that regard. And so for that reason, just please enunciate, um, especially, and, and try to refrain from speaking over one another, not that this body typically does that. Um, and also it would be most helpful since we don't convene regularly and, and some of the members are newer, just say your name before you speak, like when I said uh, City Attorney Moore, and then proceed. So, um, you know, if we chair Kelly or, or whatever, it just helps make the transcript a little easier to understand. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Appreciate the, call for the uh, clarification. Um, Kyle, if you'd like to make a statement on behalf of the city, or would you like to yield to Forward Pinellas? I'd like to yield to Forward Pinellas, please. Would the representative for Fort Pinellas please approach the podium, give us your name, and um, read your staff report. Good evening, everyone. My name is Nosheen Ramon. I'm a planner at Fort Pinellas. And just a little bit about us, so I'm not a total stranger before I start this presentation. Um, Fort Pinellas is uh, the agency for the county that oversees both the transportation and the land use planning at a bigger picture. Um, for the county, and oftentimes when some of our smaller local governments, such as yourselves, um, requires assistance in some of its planning efforts, we kind of come in to help, and that's sort of how I am here in front of you today. Um, so as you mentioned, um, today we are here for Appeal 22-01, and um, this is the same information that you've um, gone over in um, the official statement for this hearing, but it is located at 204 22nd Street. Um, as you know, this is a, um, this request type is an appeal, and the request specifically is to build a single family home, and the applicable zoning district is residential low district two. So for context um, for the board, um, and as you're aware, the applicant is requesting an appeal of an administrative decision made by the interim city manager. And in this case, the single family home specifically that the applicant is requesting to build um, would consists of three habitable stories, and therefore the applicant was denied the request and submits this appeal today. And there are a lot of factors that went into the appeal letter, but I'd like to focus on the exact um, sec code section that is relevant here today, which is 94-209, pertaining to heights. Um, you already you know, read the code section um, in verbatim, so I'm not going to repeat that, but the section that I'd like to focus on within that is that um, this section states that all residences can construct two habitable stories alongside a garage or storage area or over a garage or storage area. And as you stated as well, the code, se the code section states that the variances, the variances to the provisions of the section shall not be granted. And as Attorney Moore has clarified, this is not a variance, but rather an appeal that we are discussing here today. Um, but essentially, heights and base flood elevation aside, what we're discussing here today is the configuration of the proposed single-family home. And this proposed home would consist of two habitable stories alongside a garage or storage area and over a garage or storage area, which is contrary to what the code states clearly, which is or. Not and or, but or. And so I'll sort of go through um, the submitted site plan with you today. I'm a visual person and it would help me to explain to you, um, you know, the decision behind this by going through these diagrams. Um, this was submitted by the applicant and um, shows the ground floor of the single family home. I've outlined the garage in red for you for clarity. Now, this is the ground floor and um, it's clearly outlined here that there is non-habitable space because as you know, the city, all houses in the city must raise um, it's first floor um, above the base flood elevation. So 
I'll move on to the first floor, highlighting that same garage or outlining that same garage in red as a frame of reference. And this first floor has the kitchen and the living room. But moving on to the second floor, you can see outlined in yellow and blue our bedroom number two and the owner bedroom, respectively. So using that first floor as a frame of reference, which had the garage outlined in red, the bedroom number two outlined in yellow would be above the garage. And then next to that, owner bedroom would outlined in blue would be alongside the garage. So there you have your first configuration of a habitable story above and alongside the garage. Moving on to the third floor, using that same you know, frame of reference and building upon that house in our head, the um, bedroom number three outlined in yellow um, would be above bedroom number two and then above the garage. So that second habitable story. And then that covered deck um, to the right outlined in blue would um, be alongside the garage. So here we're looking at two habitable stories existing in configuration both above the garage and alongside the garage. And in addition to this, as you read out loud from the code, the houses in the city are allowed two stories and this proposed single family home is building a third story, which unfortunately brings up another issue of non-compliance. So per our professional um, counsel as well as legal counsel that the city has received previously, um, and the decision that has been given by the interim city manager, the city's code has been interpreted as only allowing the construction of one of the two following configurations. Those, story, those two stories above the garage or alongside the garage, not both at the same time. Um, and because the applicant is requesting um, the construction of both configurations simultaneously, as staff, um, we recommend denial of their requested appeal and uphold the administrative decision of the city manager. Um, this concludes my presentation, and I can take questions um, for, as procedure allows, um, whatever the next step may be. Does anybody on the board have a question for the young lady regarding the recommendation, the recommendation and conclusion of forward pronounce? Yes, Joe Wizzawadi. So if this same building was built without that first floor being habitable, that building would be able to be built. I think that would depend on the site plan that was submitted. I hesitate to answer a question based on those hypotheticals, um, as it really is a matter of procedure for us to focus on the site plan that's in front of us. Um, so I don't want to directly answer that question, but hypothetically, if in any way if the applicant submitted a site plan that involved two habitable stories above or alongside, there would not be an issue. Thank you. I have a question, uh, David Gardella. Go ahead, David. Uh, am I understanding, so the, to, 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 the plans submitted by the applicant are going to have two habitable floors, not three. The site plan submitted shows a ground floor, a first floor, a second floor, and a third floor. So there are three stories in this in the single family home. The ground floor does not have habitable space because that is, um, in the site plan, that is what accounts for that base flood elevation, which is essentially the house being lifted. But there's going to be three levels of habitable floors in this home the way it's designed. Correct. Okay. Thanks for clarifying that. Thank you. Thanks, David. Any other questions? We may ask you to come back. <laughs> At this time, Mr. Carollo, you or your representatives are more than welcome to come up and present the applicant's um, information to the board. Please your name. Thank your name, sir, because... Yes. yes. My name is Jeffrey Mark Sherman. I'm an attorney. I'm representing Mr. Carollo in this appeal. Good evening, Mr. Sherman. Uh, thank you all for coming and listening to us tonight. Uh, we do have a difference of opinion on the interpretation of the ordinance. And I think if we read it together, we'll understand what our point of view is. And maybe together we can think of the best way to resolve this. If you read the height ordinance, it deals specifically with height, very simplistically. And then there are certain mandatory aspects of the ordinance. So, for example, it says all residences shall comply with the base flood elevation. The word shall is typically included in statutes and ordinances as a mandatory requirement. So we know that we have to meet the base flood elevation. 
And then if we continue along, looking for the next shall, the garage shall be a minimum of 24 inches above the crown of the road. And then going further on down, we see that um, all residents shall not exceed 35 feet as measured. Be, there shall be no variances granted as to this property. And there's a bunch of shalls in this ordinance. And then we get to the habitable space. It says two habitable stories may, may, not shall here, it's not mandatory, may be constructed alongside a garage or storage area. Now, the city is highlighting the word or here, saying there's a separation between the or of garage storage area or over a garage and storage area, but there are three ors in that sentence. I don't know how they focus it. So when you take a look at the statute here, the ordinance, if you're going with the interpretation of the city, you can only build two stories over a garage. I don't think that's what this ordinance is meant to, to really say. That my choice is building it alongside without having a floor over the garage doesn't make sense either. There are lots of homes in the community that have a first floor next to the garage and a top floor over the garage as well as next to it. And similarly, there are no houses in the community that are built two stories just above the garage. It makes no sense if they have to expand beyond the size of the garage. The garage is too small. So now the question is... Mr. Sherman, can I stop you right there? Yes, sir. I built one of those. I built a house, brand new house on Harbor Drive over the garage, two stories over the garage. So I, I contradict your statement and moving forward, I'm sorry, but it was just that, the right that, time. That, that's fine. Um, and, I, and I appreciate that because we can't have differences here. But I, I sure. think the, the real question here is what is the distinction between the word may and the word shall? May gives us some latitude. And, and if you look at homes in the community, there is some latitude. Now, under the interpretation of this ordinance, nobody could build a single story house. I don't know if that's the case, if that's the rule here in, in, in Bel Air, but it seems that there might be some older people who don't want to go upstairs and have one level. And I, while it's not provided for it here, it certainly would meet all the flood elevations, it would meet the height requirements, it would meet all the garage issues, but then again, it wouldn't meet this ordinance the way it's being interpreted. And I don't think it's a fair interpretation. Now, what's important here is all of the mandatory requirements of Pendleton County are being complied with. And, and that's why we have our architect with us tonight who will explain, and he also has some visual aids uh, that can perhaps assist the board in reviewing this one. Thank you, sir. And if anyone has any questions, I guess we'll save questions for later. We'll, we'll go back and forth. We may ask you to go back and forth to the podium or your architect come up or, or the homeowner if he so chooses. So anyone else that would would like to talk on your behalf as well. Yeah, we'll have uh, Mr. Gennati will come and talk next. Thank you, sir. Okay. Good evening. I'm Mark Gennati with Gennati Architecture. Um, <clears throat> I'd also like to thank you for coming out tonight um, to help us with this issue. Um, I'm going to start by showing you a picture of a house with two stories above the garage. Sir, would you mind pulling that up just a little higher, just for purposes of the camera in front of you? There is a member. Mr. Gardella, can you see that? I can see that. Thank you. Just trying to help make sure it is. Two stories above a garage and three stories, although the third story is a 100 square foot habitable cupola on the roof. So I think we need to be open minded when we take a look at this. Um, this is a unique site. Mark, Mark, let me stop again. Are you saying the cupola is what you're considering the third floor? No, I'm saying the cupola on this, this example building. Uh, where is this located? On the base floor. Base floor. Um, it has a third floor occupiable here. Third, three floors on this side. Two floors above the garage over here. So there is a precedent. And you're saying the cupola is above that? The cupola is the third level. Yes. Okay, now stop right there because when you read our ordinance, it mentions the word cupola, but it's yeah. not happening. Well, so no electricity, no plumbing. Sure. It's a cupola, and I'm not surprised. I'm sorry, but it's habitable then. 
one, let's say that, because it's listed on the property appraiser's website as living area. So it's not the cupola, I'll stand correct. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So, as Mr. Sherman mentioned, these are the options for, um, in the, it's shown in the height section. It's not a configuration idea, it's to determine the height. In fact, the code is listed as the height. So you have a garage and two floors above the, the garage. That's one option you can have. Or the other option you can have is a garage or storage and two habitable stories adjacent to it. So the code almost gives you the, the idea that you have to select one to determine height. So we selected this one. Now the building that we've designed complies with the city's height requirements. It complies with the FEMA requirements. It complies with all setback requirements. It's a hurricane-proof structure uh, in accordance with current code. Um, it just simply uses the two habitable stories above a garage to determine its height. Now, I think the fact that we can squeeze another living area within that, surrounding that garage, I don't think that really is addressed in the code. And that's where our difference is. Um, Going back to your earlier point, here's, here's an example of, of what the building would look like. Again, heights permitted, setbacks are permitted, all the flood zone requirements are met, uh, and the city, in fact, doesn't have an issue with that. We have had the plans reviewed by an independent plan reviewer, and it complies with all current building codes. Um, this is a look at the rear of the building. And if you took... Mr. Gardella, can you see that? I, I can, thank you, I can, Mike, thank you. Okay. If we listen to the Progress Pinellas interpretation of the code, we could make this entire first floor storage and build the exact same building. So there's a problem with the language of the code. Um, you know, it's not to us to fix it, but I think we need to make the point. The fact that you don't normally see windows in a first floor storage of a flood zone home is because they're not permitted in the FEMA flood zone. However, this entire first floor is above the flood elevation, so we would be permitted to build all these windows uh, just as the project was designed. We would just have to dedicate that entire first floor to uninhabitable storage space which seems to be a shame. Um, and that's really the gist of our argument. We believe that that height section where you can pick two stories above parking as the determinant of your height is what we use to determine the height of the building. I think we got very clever with the design to make it work. We have a very thin uh, concrete, poured concrete structural slab which allowed us to get reasonable heights to get that extra space. And certainly the tax value of uh, this three-story development far exceeded two-story development with a big storage room. So I, I hope I made myself clear and I'd like to answer any questions. Last question, Mark. You don't deny that you are planning three habitable store, um, stories, is that correct? Nothing in the code. <laughs> That's a yes or no answer. Nothing in the code mentions Three stories are not permitted, and yes, we are. That's all I wanted to know. Yes, you plan on three stories. Yes, sir. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Yeah, um, board member Gatliff. Did um, did anyone approach the city with these plans prior to jumping right into it? To... That's a good question. Yes, we did. Dan? I'm going to show you the results. Uh, in April of 2001, I sent uh, the former city manager what? these plans. 2001? 2001. 2001? Yep. This is 21. Yep. 21. I'm sorry, 2021. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, which, this is very close to the actual site plan that we ended up with. 
and I sent this drawing here, and I have the emails here, and have we included in those emails in our... Okay, I have the emails here if you'd like to see. Them. And with an elevation of the building, and with the graphic that's on the construction drawings that show the garage, the two stories, and the three stories um, here. The response I got from the city was um, this, these documents. This shows some markups of the setbacks, confirming our setback requirements. And our building section that was marked up to clearly show the height limits, heights of the pool deck, the heights of the garage above the crown of the road, etc. Um, there was no mention at that time of the of the uh, of the three stories. Our drawings clearly show three it said third and fourth. Mark being <clears throat> board member. Going back a little bit of your conversation, you brought up the house on North Bayshore with the Copla. Mm -hmm. That Copla should not have any electrical in it, even though it may be a third floor. So there's no plumbing, no electrical in that level. Mm -hmm. Just so everybody is clear on that. Yeah, it's, yeah, and that may be. It's listed on the property appraiser's website as a livable area. Well, livable, yes, but requirements of the city were no electrical, no plumbing. Mark, for the record, I have to say I want that to be clear. For the record, to back up what Mark just said, that home never came before this Board of Adjustment or a variance. Yeah. So however it was built must have complied to what the city ordinances were because our board never heard that case. Well, this code, this code, uh, this height code is uh, 1997. House was built much more recently. Any other questions for Mr. Gennady? David, any questions? Not for me, thank you, Rick. You're fine, thank you, Michael. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Is there anyone else who intends to appear on behalf of the applicant as you made for their agent, as you made your case in chief? Sir, forgive me, were you sworn earlier? Yes. Okay. You just state your name and address for the record. Address as well? Yes, please. Uh, Lawrence Migliara, 2413 West Big Street, Campbell, Florida, 33629. Uh, my name's Lawrence. I'm the general contractor, and uh, I had reviewed the plans personally prior to submittal and uh, found them to be in compliance with the Florida Building Code. As Mr. Gennady said, uh, we met all the uh, FEMA requirements, height requirements, setbacks, and such. Um, we also had uh, a private provider professionally review the plans, um, and they uh, have given us something in writing, just stating as such that the structure meets all the Florida building codes. So I just want to enter that into the record. Mm -hmm. That's all I have. <clears throat> Any other questions for our general contractor? No. Welcome, sir. Good evening. I'm Santo Corolla, owner of the property, and I thank you all for being here and helping through this process. I'm going to approach this from a non-architect, non-engineer, non-lawyer, um, trying to understand what you can or can't build and what you can design or not design in this community. So, in looking at the code, it specifically lists this section that everyone's referring to as the height section, and it's to be used to determine the height limit of the building. And as you read it, it says you can have two habitable stories may be constructed alongside a garage or storage area, or over a garage or storage area. So, as Mr. Gennady's drawing showed, two stories above a garage or two stories alongside a garage or storage area, that, if that's ex the only thing you can build in this community, I prove that to be different. At 
2235 Donato, there is a home under construction that is two stories adjacent to the storage or garage and one story above. Well, if you're limiting all construction to this height section, it does not qualify for that because it has two adjacent and one above the garage. So that, to me, indicates that this is the height section. No, this is not the living section. There happens to be a living section in this code. If you turn back to section 94-220, minimum living areas and setbacks. Notice it doesn't say maximum. If you look at this section, nowhere in the section does it say no third story. In fact, the only thing it shows for this particular lot, number 65, it says minimum square footage of the first floor, 1,500 square feet. Minimum square footage of the second floor, 200 square feet. Nowhere in there does it say no third floor or a minimum on the third floor or a maximum on any floor. So there are numerous homes in this community that are, and I got pages of them, that are two stories adjacent, one story on top of storage, which does not meet the section that everyone is referring to here, the height section, because the height section specifically says two stories above and two stories adjacent. When we determine the height of this home, my architect and engineers chose the two stories above the garage to determine how high this home can be built. We then proceeded, once we got feedback from the city back in 21, to spend quite a bit of money designing a home to meet the code. Once we didn't get any kickback, and what, how we interpreted the code in 21. We spent well into six figures just doing this. I went through this with everyone, engineers, architects, and in looking at homes in this community, this home meets the code. It's got a base flood, or it's got a base floor elevation above the flood on the first floor, so it's qualified, it can have windows in it, it's more than storage. Once it's above base flood, it's more than storage. The design of the structure is not a normal design, meaning that the engineers went through great lengths, and it's not going to be an inexpensive home to build. It's going to be a very well-built, hurricane-proof home. And the strangest part of it is, I could build the structure I could build this structure, but I can't have it have, have the bottom floor habitable. That doesn't make sense. So either way, this structure is going to get built, but the bottom floor is going to be storage with windows. I, I think that's what we're in layman's terms. That that is just a weird argument. It's like the base flood of the the base floor of the house is above base flood. So it qualifies for living area. We meet the height requirement. We did choose the two floors above the garage to determine the height requirement. And just like the houses in this community, there are two stories adjacent to a garage and one story above a garage. That was, that's qualified. Those homes would not qualify if you're, if you're holding them to the height section because they shouldn't have that one floor above and two floors adjacent. And there's numerous and numerous homes like that. That's our position. I uh, appreciate everybody's time in this matter. And I'm trying to make this community my home for my family. We're in Oldsmar right now. We're trying to move here permanently. So thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Santa. Is there anybody else in the audience that would like to speak? tonight. Um, if so, you're welcome to be sworn in. If not, can I ask the representative from um, Forward Pinellas to come up to the podium one more time because the last part of your um, conclusion and the analysis and the findings 
Um, I'd like to reiterate, I'd like to re reiterate that your findings had to do with both configurations. Is that correct? Correct. Do the board members understand that? It isn't an or situation, it's an and situation. Is that correct? I believe the correct statement would be that it's a matter of whether one or the other can exist, and if the code were to allow both, it would technically state and slash or. Okay, because the applicant, you've got on your final page, applicant requests construction of both in red configurations simultaneously, and that's, that's what we're dealing with here. Correct. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Okay, Jerry, anything? David, any other questions? No, that's fine, Mike. Okay, again, anybody else in the audience who wants to speak? Welcome to. Okay, we're going to move forward. At this point, um, we, we've hit the section where we ask for a motion if someone wants to make a motion in a second. Um, so at this point, uh, I would ask any board members if you'd like to make such a motion. Um, Mr. Mora, you might want to explain to us how this motion should be um, handled. Thank you. The, the agenda materials say motion always in the affirmative. That's a parliamentary preference that when you make a motion, you do so in the affirmative, move to approve um, rather than move to deny. The rationale for that typically is to avoid confusion in the vote. A motion and a second does not bind you to that result, meaning your vote, just because you move to place something on the table to be approved, does not mean you have to vote to approve. You're just approving the body voting on the matter at all. Um, if the body is so inclined to move in the, in the negative, move to deny, for example, uh, the relief requested, and here in this case, the, the appeal. If were that in your case and you, and you did proceed that way, I would pause to make it exceedingly clear what result your vote is. It's the reason you don't typically do that, because if you say move to deny and I vote, it's to deny and sometimes people get confused. So the, the material say we'll move in the affirmative. You're free to move however you wish. Um, that is a parliamentary preference for ease in the record. Thank you, Mr. Warren. So all board members understand what we're about to do. Would any board member like to make a motion? I move that we deny the appeal. There's a motion to deny on the floor, Mr. Chair. Is there a second for the motion? I would second that. Carol are you Are you seconding the motion, ma'am? Okay. So, member, what's your last name? I'm sorry? Henry. Member Henry seconds. So, there's a motion on the floor, Chair, to deny the relief requested. The motion on the floor is to deny the relief requested for the benefit of all members present, including those appearing digitally. The motion is to deny. If you vote yes or aye, you are voting to deny the relief requested and uphold the interpretation uh, provided by the city official below. That is the motion on the floor. At this point, it would be my advice that this body, uh, before voting, uh, discuss, deliberate, or, or otherwise articulate its rationale. Uh, and with that, I, I turn it back to the body. Is there any further comment from any of the members? Um, for reasons of, of uh, interest or further understanding before we vote. Mike, if I can, I'd like to just make a comment to Mr. Uh, Corelli, the applicant. I agree the way the board or the way the code reads. I mean, he can build that same exact home and have storage there, which it's not uncommon for people in the beach communities over, over the years to have built homes similar to this that are below the flood elevation, base flood elevation, and then after they move in, we all know it occurs sometimes where they go in and uh, finish a room off for, for a game room, office, what have you. Um, he's being diligent in building the home above the base flood elevation, and uh, I understand what he's trying to accomplish. It's just unfortunate the way our codes read. Uh, if, if this goes forward, I think we're going to open a uh, can of worms in the future unless something's changed code-wise to allow, you know, multiple three three habitable stories. Uh, I understand what he's trying to do, but I just 
can't, can't see it proven as based on the way that our codes are, are written, unfortunately. That's just my, my thoughts. Thank you, Mr. Cardello. One last time, any other comments from any board members before we vote? There's a motion on the table to deny. There is a second. Patty, would you please call the roll? Mr. Bean? Aye. Ms. Conry? Aye. Mr. Gardella? Aye. Mr. Gatliff? Aye. Mr. Wizzawati? Aye. Ms. Goldman? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. By your vote, you have unanimously voted to uphold the uh, administration's decision below. Uh, with that, that concludes this hearing. Thank you. Um, Mr. Carollo, you and your representatives, thank you very much for coming here. Um, we appreciate your time. We understand your situation at this point. Um, I would ask a motion to adjourn if there's no other further business before this board. Motion to adjourn. And Mr. Carollo, we wish we welcome you to our community in whatever manner you finally put your home and wish you well while you're here. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Second. Is it second? second? Oh, in favor? Aye. Aye. We stand adjourned.